All right, this effect right here, the first time I saw it, I was baffled. But I couldn't tell if it was post-production or just Yachty moving the links by himself. It's a simple shot, but it looked crazy and got my attention. It's the kind of thing that makes people pause your edit and go, yo, how did he do that? That's mad clean, especially if you add some glow to tie it all together. And for the whole glowing effect part, it's usually used in music videos, mostly rap and mostly Florida rappers, bro. Shout out to my home state of Florida, man. West Palm Beach, Broward County, and Alachua, boy. So many bright artists coming up from there right now. And yeah, I lived all over Florida. I've moved around a lot growing up, but now your boy is currently in Paris, the city of lights. But anyways, yeah, kind of sidetracked there. But it's such a cool effect because you can really customize it in your own way. And you can be positive that it hasn't really been done before. Even though it's something you see in a lot of videos, it's pretty common. But you can always add your own twist to it, just like they did in this music video by moving the links of the chain. And that's what I'm going to show you today. How to remake this really cool moving chain effect and how to add unique glows to it. And it'll really just step it up. Also, right before we get into the tutorial, guys, make sure to like and subscribe. It costs you guys nothing and it shows support and enables me to keep dropping for you guys. All right, now with the footage inside of After Effects, let's dive into how to recreate this actual animation and add some glow to it so the first thing that we're going to come and do is pick a frame where we can kind of have all the necklace because since it's already zoomed in and cropped i can't really get the ones that are up here so i'm gonna have to use this image and just crop it myself later on and i'm gonna show you guys how to do that so the first step is getting a clean frame right here and this one is perfect so what we're gonna do to freeze this is basically coming here to the layer we're going to right click it we're gonna go to time and we're gonna click freeze frame. And now as you guys can see, everything is frozen. It's not moving, so this is perfect. And now we're just gonna duplicate this layer and we're gonna name this one cross and we're gonna begin masking out the actual cross. So to begin masking out the cross, what we're gonna do first is use the pen tool. You can either click G on your keyboard to bring it up while being selected on the actual layer or you can just come up here and I don't think you can see it on my screen recording, but the pen tool is just right there as you guys can see. And we're gonna begin masking this out and I'm just gonna speed up the process. Keep in mind, the better your mask is, the better the effect is going to look. So I'm gonna come right here and just play with the mask. And if you guys don't know how to add like these kind of curves to your mask, I'm just gonna show you really quickly. You just hold down, right? I mean, I'm still holding down left on the mouse and then you can just move it around just like this so you can get smoother masking. So yeah, I'm just gonna mask through this and I'm gonna come to you guys when it's finished. So once you're done masking, it should look something like this. Mine is not the cleanest cause I mean, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm doing it as quick as I can. So if I turn off this bottom layer right here, as you can see, the subject is masked out and the mask looks trash. But there's a fix to this. If your mask is already good and you just want to enhance it, you just uh, search up this effect called a refined soft matte. And as you guys can see, instantly it looks a lot better. So instead of refined soft matte, you can play around with all of the settings, smooth it out, feather it, shift edge. And I think I'm going to bring the shift edge kind of like to like negative 30 because I don't want the background bleeding through. And yeah, we have an okay mask right here. It's not the best, but it's going to be okay for this tutorial. And now the next step is we're going to duplicate this background layer once again, and we're going to bring it on top of the cross and we're going to name this one left and we're going to duplicate it again and name it right. And we're going to be basically masking out these parts of the chain. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to mask it out because it's going to take a bit too much time because as you guys can see, there's a bunch of detail in here. So I'm just going to rotoscope it. I don't advise rotoscoping still objects, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to do it. But yeah, for still objects, just remember, it's always better to mask it out and take the time to do it. So while freezing the first one, as you guys can see, we only have the chain selected and that's good. And we're going to go and rotoscope the second one. But like I said, two seconds ago, guys, don't rotoscope, use masks. It's better. And once you're done masking everything out, I'm just going to turn the background off. You should have something like this. And for the sake of the quality, I'm just going to throw a refined soft matte on these two layers as well so it just cleans everything up and makes everything look a bit nicer as you guys can see it instantly just makes everything look so nice so yeah this is our starting point and now we're going to get to the animation of the chain and then we'll get to the glow at the end of the video so stick around don't miss a step because this is the most important part of the video now that we have everything ready what you want to do is make sure that everything is frozen so as you guys can see if i were to move this along it's all frozen and the uh, actual video layer itself is not moving so if you haven't frozen these individual links right here just right click time and freeze frame and you can throw them into a pre-comp but anyways let's get to the whole animation part so for the right one i'm going to make it come down and for the left one i'm going to make it come up so we have this kind of chain movement right there so i'm going to click p on my keyboard to bring up all of the position keyframes i'm going to click the stopwatch right here on position and i'm going to click it on rotation as well and i'm going to click u to bring those two keyframes up and i'm going to go all the way right here i'd say to the eighth frame and what i'm going to do with the position is bring it down just like that and we're going to bring it to the side just like that so now we have this 
movement right here and we're gonna smooth it out i'm gonna show you guys some secret sauce and i'm sure like probably most of you haven't even heard about this yet so as you guys can see it does look pretty static and i'm gonna drop some secret sauce for you guys right here on how to actually make it look smoother and not just so linear so what we're gonna do is grab these keyframes right we're gonna come up to the pen tool and we're gonna hold left click and you should see convert vertex tool so now that we have the vertex tool selected we have our two keyframes selected we're gonna come to this point right here and we can just like drag it out like this and as you guys can see we have like a curve going on so if i were to play this back it kind of just like curves in like this but this is a bit too harsh so i'm just gonna like have it just a tiny bit you just want to play around with the actual uh, graph of the keyframes and just everything to try to get it smooth and once you tweak everything it should look something like this for the first part and now we're going to get onto animating the second part and then we're going to animate the keyframes so step by step guys it's going to be a long video i know but follow along carefully and you will achieve stunning results so let's hop right into the second link right here same thing we're just going to actually play with the position on the first keyframe and then reset it at the end so right here for the first one i'm just gonna do this right there bring that down just like that and i'm gonna keyframe that and i'm gonna go all the way right here to the eighth frame i'm gonna click this little arrow go to transform and reset so now it does this as you guys can see it's already looking super clean even though we really haven't tweaked anything and it's still super linear it already looks fire so we're gonna drag the left link right here beneath the cross so it goes underneath this part right here and we don't have it layering on top and as you guys can see already this looks crazy so we're going to grab all of these keyframes right here excluding this one and we're going to apply this graph to it and if you guys don't have flow just recreate this graph inside of the graph editor by selecting the keyframes and clicking this icon right here so i'm going to click apply and we're going to play this through yeah, as you guys can see, this is super fire. The animation is a bit too slow, so I'm going to undo the keyframes and I'm just going to drag them out to like 20 frames, maybe. I'm going to grab all of them again and I'm going to apply once again. And now, as you guys can see, we have a way smoother animation. And yeah, we're kind of getting like glitchy part on like the actual links itself. And that's because of the rotoscope, guys. So that's why I told you earlier, don't rotoscope, use masks. It's going to be a lot easier for still images and animating still images in general. So yeah, just follow that rule and you'll be all set. So yeah, this is it for the first part of the animation. We have the links moving. And now I'm going to show you how to actually make a crazy unique glow effect. I'm going to show you guys really quickly in my other composition what it looks like. Looks crazy. So I'm going to show you how to make this. So we're going to come back to the composition right here. And the first effect that we're going to throw on is going to be a deep glow. But before all that, we're going to grab our cross, the left links and the right links. And we're going to throw it into a pre comp and just name the pre comp. Like, I don't know, just like chain anim or something. And we're going to delete the whole bottom layer because we don't need that anymore. And now we're going to add another adjustment layer. And now we're going to add a deep glow. And if you guys don't have deep glow, that's OK. You can use regular glow. So now it's going to look crazy like this. And we're just going to bring down the exposure a ton to something like, yeah, 0 0.11. We're going to keyframe that. We're going to bring down the radius at first to 268. We're going to click U. We're going to go four frames ahead and we're going to increase the radius and just a tiny bit on the exposures, nothing crazy. And then what we're going to do with these keyframes right here is we're going to grab them. We're going to go four frames ahead, copy, paste, rinse and repeat all the way till the end. So now we have this kind of glowing effect. And if you want to make it smoother, you can easy ease it by selecting all the keyframes, right clicking, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And now we have a smoother animation. And now we're going to add a uh, CC light sweep effect, which does this and it looks super cool. So we're gonna animate this really quickly to kind of just like do this on the chain. So we're gonna have a starting point like right there. We're gonna click the keyframe on the center. So we're gonna go to the beginning of our timeline, click the center stopwatch. We're gonna go uh, eight frames ahead and we're gonna bring the center just like that. So now we have this effect and right when it gets to the middle let me just pull up these keyframes like right there i'm gonna want it to actually uh like be a bit more intense on this part so you can play with the width and the sweep intensity the edge intensity so now as you guys can see on the edges we have like this kind of glow it's super fire and we're just going to keyframe all of that and we're gonna go all the way to the beginning and we're gonna reset it and we're just gonna drag this one back to where it was at the beginning this looks super fire but it's a bit too fast so i'm just gonna drag this last keyframe like right there 
so it just goes around smoothly during the whole animation itself and one last effect that you can throw onto this that i think personally looks super fire it's another cc light effect uh let me find which one it was i believe it was cc light rays if i'm not mistaken yeah exactly it was cc light rays so what we're gonna do first is right at the beginning we're gonna have it positioned right here at the top of the chain we're gonna click keyframe on the intensity center as well radius and warp softness right and then we're gonna come all the way to the end around here i'd say and we're gonna drag this all the way down like maybe even to like right there and we're just gonna up the warp softness as we go down you can pretty much just triple it and play with the radius don't want to play with it too much though and now if i bring up all these keyframes we should have something like this as you guys can see pretty crazy effect and if you throw it into an actual clip or an actual music video and animate it correctly it can look a lot better than what i just did because this was just a rapid simple tutorial just to show you guys how to animate it and give you guys the actual base idea itself so that is going to be a wrap for today i hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you guys did do not forget to leave a like comment and subscribe to the channel your guys' support really means a lot it enables me to keep making these tutorials for you guys and actually live from my passion of video editing so if you guys mess with my content and want to see more from me don't forget to subscribe so you can see my videos pop up in your feed and on that note boys i will catch you guys next time peace